come to the apartment, I will call the police. And if you come to my work, I will call the police. And I went to work. And when I got home that night, he had broken down the front door like there were wood shards everywhere. And I went inside and he had broken some things. Like there was a cello that he had broken and uh, he had ripped some posters off of the wall. And he had shaved his head in the sink. And so his hair was just everywhere. And so I called the cops. And when they finally got there, they were like, there's nothing we can do. They have this thing called squatter's law. And when someone has been living in your apartment for three months, they set up a residency there. And so the cops would not, they wouldn't help me. And Matt came back and he was waiting for me in the apartment. And uh, again, I just, um, I pitied him so much because he loved me and I didn't love him. And I felt guilty about that. And so somehow I just, I somehow let him stay because I felt bad. And it also felt like he was the only person in the world who could love me. It felt like that. And so we moved into another apartment, and he promised that he would pay half the rent, but he was never able to do that. Um, and so when it got to him owing me like six months rent, then that was finally enough for me to be like, this is over. I think that my emotional work didn't amount to anything to me, but the money was a concrete way that I could see how destructive he was in my life. And so then there was a lot of fighting. Um, he came home one time at 3 a.m. Um, and he was super drunk. And he pushed me against a bookshelf. Like, I was in the air, like I had no control over my body. And I bounced from the bookshelf into a doorway. And I had had all of these picture frames like on the shelf that fell off and slid into the door jam. And so he just started opening and closing and opening and closing the door and glass shards were flying everywhere. It was really terrifying. And then a neighbor came out and told us we had to keep it down. And Matt went out into the hallway to console the neighbor. And when he did that, I shut the door and locked it. And he stood on the other side of the door and did like this. So that was the second police report I filed against him. And after that, I got my apartment manager to change the locks. Um, but then he started like showing up at my work. And I remember coming out of the kitchen because I was working at a restaurant at the time. And so I would come out of the kitchen and see him across the street, like smoking and really angry. And I would hear in my head like, wee, 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 like violins and just being really like terrified. And um, I had started filing police reports because I thought, well, I am going to have to get a restraining order because no matter what I do or say, he won't go away. And so finally, I said, I'm going to get a restraining order. And he was like, okay. And he was gone. And I was like, that's weird. Like, you haven't heard me saying I don't want to be in this, but I finally say the words, restraining order, and you might actually go away. I was like, 